I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Serious? I've seen a lot of garbage on television over the years, but this last year might just be the worst. This might even rank higher than Xeno Warrior Princess Galadriel from last year's Rings of Power disaster. This definitely looks worse than She-Hulk, and five times more awful than anything Love and Thunder gave us. Everything about this trailer looks horrific, with the very slim exception of being the landscape shots. Not only does this series spit in the face of history and insult both Egyptians and Greeks in turn for their connections to Cleopatra, it also looks extremely low budget. The costumes and weapons designs look hideous, like someone trying to learn the ropes of LARPing for the first time. I don't know who decided that gold sparkly makeup was a good idea for a docu-series, but whoever they are, they need to be out of a job as of yesterday. The Roman togas look like bedsheets, the armor looks like it's made of plastic, and the woman chosen to play one of Egypt's most iconic queens is without a doubt the biggest insult of all. And it looks as if there are many others in agreement with me. In fact, this trailer was so poorly received that Netflix turned off their comments section for fear of the backlash. Not only is this hysterical, it's also extremely well deserved. Not that Netflix has been a patron saint of listening to fans, but this is a new low, even for them. Even though this trailer has been criticized and ratioed to high heaven, we still need to talk about it, because this goes beyond race swapping, beyond fantasy characters, or injecting virtue signaling politics where they had no business into a beloved author's world. This is actually quite insidious. Let's get to the most obvious reason why this trailer and everything about this show will be wrong and deserving of scorn, derision, and mockery. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Sorry, Grandma, she wasn't. Cleopatra was of Greek lineage. She was part of the Ptolemaic Empire after Alexander the Great conquered large parts of North Africa and the Middle East and died in the fourth century. Then there was a large conflict that broke out among his generals. One of those generals was called Ptolemy, who then took over a certain area now known as Egypt. He was Greek. All of his descendants were Greek. Given the long customs of inbreeding that these lines would have indulged in, it is next to impossible that Cleopatra was black. She herself engaged in incestuous relationships with both of her brothers before embarking on affairs with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. According to worldhistory.org, the Ptolemies coexisted as both Egyptian pharaohs as well as Greek monarchs. In every respect, they remained completely Greek, both in their language and traditions. This unique characteristic was maintained through intermarriage. Most often, these marriages were either between brother and sister, or even uncle and niece. It was also suspected that Cleopatra's mother, Cleopatra V Tryphena, was her father's half-sister. According to Sheila L. Ager at the University of Waterloo, the Greco-Macedonian dynasties, which ruled Egypt from 322 until 30 BCE, established early on the practice of incestuous marriage in the royal house. This custom, according to her, had a number of pragmatic functional purposes and was profoundly symbolic of royal power. Therefore, Cleopatra was not black. She could not have been. There is a similar lack of evidence for Cleopatra having been black to be found in a depiction on the facade of the temple at Dendera, which shows her with the goddess Hathor and her child Caesarion, the son of Caesar. But you won't hear this reasoning from the show's director, Tina Garavi. She says that it would be such a political act to see Cleopatra portrayed by a black actress. The literal narcissism of this woman to think that she has a patent to change Egyptian history just blows my mind to pieces. Her and all the others so-called Netflix academics titans just demonstrate that they are operating without a full set. Factual information seems to have no place with this director at all, who seems to be operating based on feelings rather than evidence, a decision for which she is rightly being scorned. Another reason that this show is going to be thoroughly horrendous is the emphasis on Cleopatra being a girl boss. The entire trailer, the actress is shouting to the high heavens about her titles, about who she is, and how she is ruler of Egypt. The man who must say, I am the king, is no true king. Cleopatra would have had no need for posturing. People would have known who she was instantly when the royals were seen. She would not have had to tell anyone who she was or what she was capable of. People knew it simply by being in her presence. As the last queen of Egypt, she was a woman of great ability and her accomplishments are often overlooked. 
This two-minute trailer demonstrated to me that Jada Pinkett Smith, who looks as if she's going to be as faithful to history as she is to her own husband, certainly doesn't care about it either. The only other thing mentioned in this trailer besides Cleopatra's race and history are her relationships with Mark Antony and Julius Caesar. None of her accomplishments are mentioned, which were a key part of who she was, and I would think that those are far more important to the course of history. She was the only ruler of Egypt who bothered to speak the language of her country and was given the name Philopatris, a title that she was given in 35 BCE, which means she who loved her country. She was extremely patriotic, and her foreign policy goal, in addition to preserving her personal power, was to maintain Egypt's independence from the rapidly expanding Roman Empire. By trading with eastern nations like Arabia, and possibly as far away as India, she built up Egypt's economy, bolstering her country's status as a world power. By allying herself with Roman general Mark Antony, Cleopatra hoped to keep Octavian, Julius Caesar's heir and Antony's rival, from making Egypt a vassal to Rome. Ancient sources make it clear that Cleopatra and Antony did love each other, and that Cleopatra bore Antony three children. Still, the relationship was also very useful to an Egyptian queen who wished to expand and protect her empire. She was also a very serious scholar. She spoke at least seven languages and was interested in science and medicine. She researched, conducted experiments, albeit cruel and unethical ones, and wrote about her findings. In her time, she was an expert in gynecology, pharmacology, and aesthetics. Cleopatra supported advancements in science and medicine. She also contributed to the Great Library of Alexandria, which was eventually destroyed after Cleopatra's death during the Roman occupation. Although Cleopatra spent significant time researching the easiest way to die, she also experimented with cures for various ailments. Scholars have also attributed books on to toxicology and cosmetics to Cleopatra. Cleopatra also formulated skin brightening recipes, as well as salves for helping contusions heal. She also might have concocted a painkiller that she eventually used in the final moments of her life. Although scholars aren't certain how her life ended, some think it's possible she dosed herself with a painkiller to ease her final suffering. Cleopatra is a fascinating character in history. When I was a kid, she was one of the historical figures that I just could not learn enough about. She was tragic and complicated, brutal and oftentimes mysterious. She was savvy in the political realm, but also flawed in some of her executions. She was a whole person, and this trailer has turned her into every other girl boss that Hollywood is trying so desperately to push these days. I wouldn't even mention the sword fighting scenes, because not only are they horrendous looking, they are also horrifically inaccurate. There is no evidence of a Cleopatra wielding a sword and fighting. She would have no need to. She was a queen with legions of guards to protect her, a tool that she utilized likely all her life. Her truth strengths were in her mind, in true Hollywood fashion, this is going to be ignored in favor of virtue signaling actors and directors who are simply going to bow to the trends of the day because it is what they think will make them the most money. Additionally, what is with the weird British accents? You would think that in a docu-series, a show that claims it is going to describe history as it was would try to find a way to imitate the accents of the day, whether those are Greek or Egyptian, depending on who is speaking. How is that so difficult to represent? No one in Egypt at the time would have sounded like this. Cleopatra was a woman that would have sounded and been sufficiently educated without the usage of a cultured accent as we understand it. The show would have gained a smidgen more goodwill from me had they at least decided to subscribe to the linguistic cultural norms of the day. But no, they couldn't even get that right. Because the reason behind this show wasn't to accurately represent history. It is westernized, politically motivated to gain credibility with people who really don't care all that much about art and facts anyway. They flat out demonstrate that with lines like this. There is some sort of westernized obsession with race that has been slowly building like a tsunami over the last few years, which we are beginning to feel the effects of now. And it has brought with it a potent flood of narcissism that disregards anything but feelings and thoughts. They have erased Cleopatra completely from this trailer and instead have held up a propaganda piece saying words. I love the story of Cleopatra. She was one of history's most complex and interesting women. She grasped for power at a time where it was frowned upon for a woman to have too much of it and was subsequently slandered by the Romans after her death for having bewitched Caesar and Antony. But I guarantee you that none of the nuance of who she was will be discussed here. Netflix have proved that they really don't care who Cleopatra was so long as they can alter history to fit her in a mold that looks more like a Jackson Pollock painting than anything factual. Why not make a story about any of the other Egyptian queens? Hatshepsut or Nefertiti to name a few. Both were powerful women, both had stories to tell, and I would have been more than happy to see documentaries about them because Cleopatra has had more than enough media coverage already in Hollywood. Both of them would have fit the racial profile that the director is so desperate to fill, and both were rulers. 
So why was this ignored in favor of a historically inaccurate fantasy? By the way, I will be watching each part of this series and reviewing it so we can all laugh at it together and point out every single historical fallacy. Shame on you, Netflix. Shame on you, Tina Garavi. And shame on Jada Pinkett Smith and everyone else who thought that this was a good idea and would be accepted. You cannot pull the wool over our eyes or gaslight viewers until you make them see history the way you so desperately want it to be. It will be very satisfying to watch this show get cancelled after a short period of time. It's already entertaining watching the backlash the show has faced for daring to erase Egyptians and Greeks from their own history. An Egyptian lawyer has even launched a legal bid to have access to Netflix blocked within the country, pointing out that the outrage surrounding the casting has been provoked by cultural identity theft. So the only possible conclusion that one can take from why this show was even made was to create controversy. I truly think that Netflix has somehow become that annoying cousin who keeps poking you with a stick until you scream at them to stop, to which they then ask, why are you so angry? There was also the more insidious notion that people in power can simply change history to fit their political and narcissistic motives, simply because it's fun to make people angry. Don't watch this show. I will be, because it's just fodder for this channel, and I will be sure to tell you all about it so we can eat popcorn and laugh as it blows up. But for the sake of factual evidence, history, and even just good writing and TV programming, don't watch this garbage. I guarantee it will just make you annoyed, and there are far better ways to spend your time. Thanks so much for watching this video. Be sure to let me know down in the comments what other topics of modern pop culture you think deserve attention and would like me to talk about. Until next time, everyone.